Hello, my name is Mark and welcome to I'm Again Gardening located in Zone 6B in the state of New Jersey. And yes, behind me is a cover crop of winter rye in my no-till garden. Now I planted this last December and I also will show you I planted in another area last November and it's completely different because of the environments and how cold it got. But this planting area, which is about, let's say, 8 feet wide and 50 feet long, is a good example of what winter rye can do. Now the reason I planted winter rye as a cover crop because it grows over winter and stays green. And it doesn't matter if you have snow on the ground or anything else either or where you are, it, as long as it survives and stays green, it is feeding the soil and growing soil. And that's the purpose of this. Since I have a no-till garden, all the roots in here that I, after I terminate this cover crop is going to be the tilling system in the ground, free of charge, because those roots, which I will dig up a patch later on in the video and show you how deep they went, actually grew soil because it had that living root in the ground and it grows this beautiful mycorrhizal fungi out into the soil and connects all these plants together. And also, when it does that, it also exudes something called glomalin. And glomalin is exactly that, it's a glue. And it holds all those particles together and separates them and then it leaves a gap. And that gap allows other things to move around your soil and also to store water, which is very important during the hot summer months. Now, this is not for everybody. You have to have a method before you plant this up, how you're going to cut this down and when you're going to cut this down. Now, I'm going to be using a scy later on. You can use a hedge trimmer. You can crimp it. But even at this point, crimping might be out of the question because you have to apply, and I, through my research, and I used to say this a long time ago that you can crimp it, but you, I'm finding out that you have to apply at least 300 pounds of pressure for this stem to actually be bent or crimped strong enough to actually make it stop growing in the ground. Now, this is turning pale already. Some of the leaves are turning brown, which is a good indication. So that's indication number one, that the leaves are turning brown and it's actually going into a, let's say, a straw stage. The other thing you look for is here. These little yellow, I'm gonna call them like pollen pods coming out. This is the seed head, which is all the winter rye in here. Now, winter rye is different than annual rye grass. This is a grain and the other one's a grass. So now, what we can do, let's see if we can get a better shot here. This is called the anthesis stage, if the wind stops blowing here. This anthesis stage makes all these little yellow, let's say, pollen hits come out of the seeds here. Now, when that is happening, that's a good time to cut your cover crop because you know it won't grow back and it has reached its full height and potential and it's actually producing seeds right now. Now, if you want to let it go longer and produce seeds that will drop down naturally for next year's garden and will actually regrow now, you can let this go a little bit longer until this all has to dry out. But that might be an extra month from now or a little bit even longer. So your gardening time or planting up something is very limited for this to happen. Last year I planted this up in December. Now we are in the first week of June right now and this changes every year when it comes to this height and it goes to this anthesis stage which is the pollen coming out of the seed head now and that's a good time to terminate it. So sometimes it happens in May, sometimes it happens in June and it can happen uh, further on in July. It's all depending on the weather and how established it gets over the winter time. Now here I have another planting of the same winter rye out of the same bag from the same seed company. And you can see it's not as strong as the other one I was showing you. This is only about, let's say, three and a half feet tall. The reason why this happened is because I planted this not in December last year, I planted this in November, which is about the right time to plant it. Now what happened in November is that we got this very cold snap of weather. Let's say it didn't get above like 20 degrees for about a week. And it just stunted the growth of this and changed it. So it's all about the timing and there's no way to ever guarantee uh, when to do it. Usually I plant it in November and this happens. And then if you have this happen, then you just have to maybe sometimes replant it or just allow this to just go for what it is. And you can see that it's just a small amount here. It's the same size, but didn't get as tall. 
So when planting winter rye, you can also do different methods. You can see here that we have three columns of winter rye going, and there's only about two or three seeds per area. And you can leave the rest area blank. Now this is not covering the ground as much, but at least it's something and you're keeping a living root in the ground. So there are options for you to do certain things. And the best option is, is to always be confident in what you're doing. And this allows you to research and do your own gardening area the way you wish it to happen. And here's another fine example that I have leaf mold that I put down first. And then I planted some uh, winter rye seeds into a, a little small area, about three or four seeds, and it grew up. Now you can do something like this in the garden because now we have a living root because the leaf mold is great to put on top, but now you have a better scenario because you have the leaf mold and the living root in the ground growing mycorrhizal and building soil for you. And only plants can build or grow soil. Humans cannot do this. Nature has perfecting this longer than we've been on this planet and is it, it's, has it down to a perfection and is always going to do a good job for you when you grow organically to have a living root in the ground just like it does in nature all the time and that will feed those microbes like I said before and just be happy that that soil is actually there for the plant. The plant wants the soil to flourish and now it's going to pull all those nutrients out of the ground that the plant wants because it has those exudates and it's going to break down your sand, silt and clay we have a beautiful combination of crimson clover and winter rye together. Now you can see how beautifully it's working in harmony with each other and supporting the bees and also too we can suppress the uh, crimson clover at any time and plant anything we want in there and cut down our winter rye. So now I'm going to start cutting the winter rye down. I'm going to be using this beautiful scythe. It has an aluminum handle on it. It's a little bit lighter weight. Uh, very good. But when you have a scythe and you need to cut things down, you also need one of these. This is a sharpening stone that you just go ever so slightly across the blade and just keep that nice and sharp so you can get into that winter rye with ease. I'm going to be starting at the back of the row first, heading towards the barn. Now I'm not going to do a full swing. I want to cut it so it lays down almost like a mat. So I'm going to keep it nice and neat as I can. Uh, going forward here. I only got this little bit done so far and the reason I stopped the video was because I had my cell phone going off so much and I saw the message and they sent it again and again. I keep on getting a warning that there's going to be 95 mile hour winds heading my way out from Pennsylvania which is directly west of me. Um, it's a major storm and it's going to be hail and flooding so I'm going to cut this short. So look uh, forward to part two. I'm going to get inside the house and secure everything down. With those kind of winds, uh, it's something always breaks around here. So I'll see you shortly, and uh, give it a thumbs up, and enjoy, and I'll see you in part two. Thanks.